Greetings, 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 everybody. How you guys doing? My name is Nick George, and I officially welcome you all to the listening. This is our first open mic of 2022. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, I'm glad you guys can make it. I see we got a few people that are joining us. Thank you so much for spending your Friday night here in front of a screen. Once again, we thought we were done. We really did. We thought we were out. We thought we were safe. And that's not the case but we still at it you guys know what it is the listening is here to honestly just have a good time with the people tonight's theme i don't know if you can catch from the playlist that we've been putting out there but the theme has been inspired by the bgs the name of the song is how deep is your love and that's really the question that we present to everybody um the mic is open and we got a few people lined up but there might be some space for you if you dare now i would be remiss it would be ridiculous for me to not wish all my people of color a very happy, beautiful, blessed, prosperous, dope. Uh, what, did, what did kids say? Um, lit, that's one of them, right? A very lit Black Legacy Month. Um, if you call it Black History Month, that's cool too. Um, shout out to everybody that is celebrating. If you are a person of color, if you love a person of color, uh, welcome to the party. Uh, um, I'm having fun right now, but I also want to make sure that we recognize and honor this land. Now, the listening has been living here in Central Virginia, Lynchburg, Virginia to be exact, um, but this land is originally uh, to the Monacan Indian nation. So we honor them and the ancestors that uh, preceded us as the original caretakers. Uh, we dare not disrespect it by pretending like this is ours. We're not on that energy. And speaking about our energy, it's all love from the top to the bottom. I don't know if you guys can hear, but I'm jamming right now to my little playlist, um, golly. Uh, I would love to hear how you guys are doing. If you're watching from your phone, from your screen, from your tablet, uh, light up the comment section real quick, because otherwise it's like I'm talking to myself and I'm okay with talking to myself. I've, I've like owned that part of my journey and my process. It's, it's okay. And if you talk to yourself too, it's okay. We can talk to each other and have one of these, one of, one of those. Yes. It's all love. All the love. If you see people running around in the background, um, it's a Friday night. So we do have a bedtime. Our kids do have a bedtime. Please don't judge me. Um, but it's a Friday night. So it is what a TI is. We got some amazing, amazing content and questions for everybody tonight. So please stay tuned. And once again, let us know you're there by lighting up the comment section for us. Let me go ahead and pause this. Because if you know me, you know, I don't really need much of an invitation to start dancing along to music. Um, I have embarrassed many people. I've embarrassed myself. Once again, I'm cool with that. Okay. I accept this piece of myself, but we're not here to watch me dance. We're here for the open mic. Now, if you don't know, The Listening is an organization here in Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, we're a nonprofit and our mission is that we believe we can make a difference. We can make an impact with the performing arts. That's music. That's rap, that's poetry, that's dance, that's theater. We can use these performing arts to make an impact in the world around us. And we can do this, uh, obviously, with our community engagement. We're communicating with y'all right now. We're engaging with y'all. Um, but we also try to do, do some uh, youth programming. Now, um, the first person I want to bring to the mic or to the stage real quick, uh, they represent the Office of Diversity, Inclusion, 
I'm gonna forget the others because I'm a bad person. Oh, don't be mad at me. Oh, don't be mad at me. I'm gonna bring them because they can do it a whole lot better. But I did wanna say that um, the Office of Diversity with Randolph College has been very supportive of our organization. We've been working together since, uh, since things started for this office. So I wanna give them some time to talk to the people. Uh, please make some noise if you can from where you're at for Mr. Avery and Miss Keisha. Oh, that looks weird. Let me even it out. There we go. There we go. We're going to even it out and unmute the microphones. How y'all doing? Doing good. Doing good. Good evening, everyone. How are you doing out there? The whole, the whole internet is watching, guys. The entire internet is watching you. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, it is the Office of Diversity, Identity, Culture, and Inclusion over here at Randolph College. Culture, yes. that's the part I forgot. I forgot yes, the culture okay. part. I understand. The culture part is really important, especially given what you're doing, um, which continues to not only, um, uh, I would guess, uh, proliferate the culture, but also uplift the culture and use all of the um, mechanisms and tools of our culture to, you know, um, bring communities together, hear people's voices. And we are really so proud of that and really happy to support that. Um, it's something that we really believe in. We believe in the power of the word and we definitely believe in the power of the people coming together. So what's up? What's up to the listening? Um, and so we're happy to have everyone here. Yes. Happy Black History Legacy Month. And that will be my little token after Avery speaks. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming out. Really, really excited. Um, this is the start of um, the Black History Month for Randolph College. Um, we have a lot of different things going on um, this month and uh, further. Um, one thing that we that's really important for us is that uh, we, we recognize that Black history never stops. Um, so we're uh, continuing on past. Uh, Black History Month, of course, um, uh, moving into March and so on and so forth. But um, we just very grateful um, that the listening was able to um, uh, work with us. And uh, we're really, really excited to, to be here. Um, I've, I love the listening. I've, I've been uh, around the listening for a couple of years now. Um, I've the first time I really encountered them was when I, I just kind of showed up um, to one of their open mics, uh, open mic nights at the record shop in downtown Lynchburg that's not there anymore. Um, um, and it was a great time. So that's my spiel. I just want to say hello to everybody and uh, thanks for coming out. Awesome. Thank you guys for sliding through. Um, I do remember, um, and I don't think you went by Avery. You had like a, a different name. No, yeah. So uh, Avery's my middle <laughs> name. My, my government name is Zachariah. So that's. Oh, uh, my fault. Don't wait, wait, wait. Don't put the government out there. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right. I did it. I was the one, so it's fine. <laughs> the pain. He's the pain. The pain. <laughs> pain. Yeah, no. Well, listen, so. we, we appreciate the love. We love the love. Um, for those who don't know, The Listening has one of our premier programs in partnership with the Children's Defense Fund, our Freedom School program. We're coming back in 2022, and we hope to definitely do some more work with you guys because um, definitely I'm sure we can all agree that we can do much better together than we can apart. Uh, so thank you all for sliding through. Anybody watching, if you'd love to check out the work they're doing, you can visit them on socials. I think the um, the Randolph page is on Instagram. I, I believe it's on Facebook because I definitely tagged them in it. And uh, definitely just uh, get familiar, man. The community needs to be aware of what they're doing and vice versa. They need to be aware of the community doing as well. We need to be aware and help and support each other out. And that's how we show the love. So thank you all for sliding through. And if you do feel brave enough to jump on the mic, <clears throat> Miss Keisha. <clears throat> uh, I'm ready. What are we doing? Are you ready? <laughs> the, well, hey, say this. Don't, don't do like, that. Am I, I coming back? You... What's happening? How about that? I'll give you some time to come back, get you, grab a Moscato or something, and then we'll get active. <laughs> I don't need <laughs> hey, Thank you. Don't sleep on me either, Nick. You know about me. Say what? All right. Said, don't, don't sleep on me either. You know about me too. Oh, you got the bars. Let's get it. Let's get, get it. it. All right, the mic's going. And if the, any the of our students are out there, if any of our students are out there, welcome. We thank you for showing up. We hope that we can get you out of your um, your rooms <laughs> more often. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so yeah, 
So we hope to hear from you soon too. So thanks again, Nick. Absolutely. Absolutely. Shout out to the Randolph Massive. All right. So we're going to slide to our first person on the mic. And I hope I hope she's ready because she doesn't know I'm going to pick her now. Miss Sandra, are you ready for us? I'm going to throw you in there. Three, two, one. Miss Sandra's on the mic. How you doing? Hello, baby? hello. Can you hear me or am I distorted? You you are you are live, baby. You are live. Okay. Well, let me say a little bit about myself before I read my poem. All right. Hello, I'm Sandra Nams Ludwig, the author of the poetry book entitled Literal Life Lessons. My book may be purchased on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and at Walmart.com. The poem I am reading is entitled Zebra Love. It snowed many days and nights during the season of their togetherness. The coal and shadows blanketed the whiteness, but never penetrated the fiery hot heat of their zebra love. Until, until, love vows grounded in hope, drowned in alcohol drenched worse and changing ways. She wanted a solution, an AA solution. He felt it was not required, despite peeing in bed, sometimes mistaking the hallway for the bathroom and falling and breaking an arm that had often held her close. Yes, it snowed many days and nights during the season of their togetherness. Coal and shadows blanketed the whiteness, now smothered and snuffed out zebra love fires. Each unchanged, no attempt to change, movement, alcohol-soaked self-accusation, loosened, cemented promises of a future to be. Desperately, he tried, keeping a love that had secondary status to a yearned bottle. Beseeching biddings failed, so he hurtingly pinpointed ancestral roles, which never mattered before in their love. She was not just a bitch, she was a black bitch a black ungrateful bitch until, until powerless he lambasted a decisive bruising blow. Leave you ignorant nigga. She ran toward freedom. On his deathbed, he asked the nurse to tell his zebra love he never, ever, Stop loving her. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. I want to, I, I, like, my clapping doesn't do enough from behind the screen, but I thank you so much for sharing that. I, I'd love to, like, hear a little more just about, like, where where that inspiration came from, because that's, I'm not going to lie, that's, that's intense. How are you? Well, it, well I, I, it comes from, uh, living life and just seeing mm. relationships, all types of relationships, dysfunctional and all and all types. And so it has nothing to do in particular with anyone, but it could be anyone's relationship, interracial relationship, where race did not matter, and it can matter when things get very intense or when someone is trying to leave. And mm. that's where I was coming from with the zebra love. Yeah. Wow. Well, I thank you so much, Miss Sandra, for thank jumping you. on the mic. Before you go, I do want to ask you one question. And I want to ask every guest that comes up, how deep is your love of whatever it is that you love? If it's a person, it's a thing, it's an idea. How deep does that love go for you? My love is deep. Mm. And my love is sincere in all that I do, in teaching for over 25 plus years, 
and also the love of my daughter who got killed in 2006. And so I love deeply because I understand how fragile love is. Once you lose your only child, then what you do is you reevaluate relationships and you see how fleeting and how fragile life is. And so you learn to love deeper. Loss make you love deeper. Wow. Man, I, I appreciate you and your wisdom and your words so much. Thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Thank you. All right. Take care of yourself. Man, that's a that's a heck of a way to start. Hey, show some love for Miss Sandra in the comment section for me, please, y'all. Thank you so much. Um, I, I hope when we do come back in person and we get active together again that we get to see you there, Miss Sandra. Um, and if and if you see me in these streets, please don't be afraid to give me a hug. That's my love language. My love language is in hugs. So um, definitely do that. I mean, make sure you wash your hands and all that, and then bring it in. Bring it in. That's what we do around here. All right, let's keep let's keep it moving. Um, I preach. I see some love in the comments from Miss Sandra. And all means, guys, if you feel brave enough yourself to step to the microphone, it's open. Let us know if you want to step to it. If you're not scared, that is, because ain't no halfway stepping around these parts. All right. I did want to open that question up to all the folks that are watching because we don't select these themes arbitrarily or randomly, right? There's a conversation that we're trying to have, and you know, like Miss Sandra just pointed out, you know. When you have a life and a love that has been impacted by so many things, it's got to go deep. But how do we know if we don't ask the question? So drop it if you feel like you can. How deep is your love, right? There's a lot of us that maybe be aware of love on a very surface level, on a very, you know, pleasant, hi, nice to meet you. So like all of that stuff. But what what does it look like at its depth, right? Uh, we prioritize stories with the listening. We want to hear from those who don't really get listened to. So we want to hear from you guys. Drop it in the comments if you can, if you will, if you dare. While you do that, I'm going to bring the next person to the mic. I see that she has a guitar and a mic stand ready. So I'm going to bring her on. Y'all, please make way for Miss Chloe. How Hello. you doing, kid? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I So I saw you getting the, the guitar ready and mm -hmm. I was like, oh shit, she about to... <laughs> <laughs> she about to really do her thing now so uh if you don't mind let the people know a little bit more about yourself from whence you hail all that good stuff yeah of course so my name is chloe um i'm a singer songwriter i go to school in virginia um, at liberty university and so i'm an aspiring artist um, i write my own music i play guitar but my primary instrument is piano um and i've been writing my own music music since about middle school um, and I'm actually going to be performing an original song responding to the prompt, How Deep Is Your Love, um, tonight. Yes, let's go. <laughs> All right, I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to let you do your thing. Thank you so much. Go ahead. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So this song, I actually just finished today. So there is no title, but um, I don't want to give too much away because I want you guys to have your own interpretation of it. So here is um, an original song. I remember today how we haven't seen much of the ocean And just like his love, so much remains unexplored The deepest of waters, the trench Mariana Will go their existence without being known by I can't fathom your attention Who am I to merit it? More like who is he? that he will give to me this amazing grace amazing love i couldn't have believed in affection so deep till this amazing grace Amazing love mm -hmm. And unlike 
like the tide, he never retracts or sees. The waters obey at the sound of his name. And that same intention, unwavering devotion is mine. And I'll spend my life yearning to match it. I can't fathom your attention. Who am I to merit it? More like who is he? That he will give to me this amazing grace, amazing love I couldn't have believed in affection so deep to his amazing grace. Amazing love. Tolerant, gentle, compassionate, confident, humble and righteous and joyful and innocent. How great is his love, can't believe I'm a part of it. How great is his love, like the ocean, I'll swim in it. Tolerant, gentle, compassionate, confident, humble and righteous and joyful and innocent. How great is his love, can't believe I'm a part of it. Great is his love, like the ocean, I'll swim in it. And I can't fathom his attention. Who am I to merit Thank you. I'm not going to lie. As you were singing, like three different poems came to mind. <laughs> and... I started, I, I'm legitimately here trying to write these notes down and ideas. Um, wow, thank you. Thank you so, of course. so, you I so mean, much. It's kind of obvious, but I would love for you to just share a little bit about that, uh, the, the, the wave you were riding with that, because that sounds like you were in a pocket. So, like, yeah, what, what yeah, are you of experiencing course. With that song? Yeah, so, um, and I know that not everybody here shares my beliefs, and you most definitely do not have to, but um, I am a Christian, and I've grown up um, in the faith, and so that is a huge part of my life and something that is very, very important to me, and just the love of Christ that I have experienced and in the lives of the people around me um, is so incredible and unlike anything that I could, like, truly ever describe correctly in a song, um, but I was just thinking the other day and just kind of meditating on that. And um, I was just thinking about like the ocean and like how vast it is and how unexplored it is. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I felt like love is one of those topics that is kind of similar um, in a symbolic sense. And so I just wanted to write a song that kind of described all of those connections. Yeah, I think, I think, I think you did that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think you did that. And I think that, uh, just being so open and willing to just put it out there creatively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course. Perfect. Uh, wow, thank you so much. Y'all give some love. Show some love <laughs> for Chloe. Thank you so much. Hey, if you still thank feel froggy after a little bit and you want to step to the mic once again, definitely hang around. But um, yeah, y'all show some love in the comments for Chloe. Thank you once again, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, man. So guys, the, the mic is open. Yo, that, that was that was really good. Yo, Miss Miss Sandra came through and did her thing. Chloe came through and did her thing, man. Thank y'all once again. And this bears repeating because I know what it is. This is what the listening is right now. It's all of these artists kind of bringing their truths to the forefront. I love how Chloe put it. Like she's coming with her faith perspective, but the listening is a space for all of that. You know, I, I would love to hear so much more from so much more of our community that is real and that exists and just needs to have their voices heard. So before I get on my whole bandwagon or whatever, I'm not gonna jump into it there. Listen, y'all stay tuned. We have 
an amazing signature artist coming up. Now, y'all know how we rock, right? If we say we have a signature artist, we got somebody who's really about that life. Like, they're not playing around with the pen and the pad and with the notes and all of this. Like, they they read liner notes for albums like the rest of us. So I'm excited for Levi the Poet to jump in soon. Not yet. Not yet. You got to make y'all wait for it. You got to make y'all wait for it. You know when you smell something cooking and your mom says, nah, you got to wait for dinner. Y'all got to hold on. But... I do have a dear friend that's coming up soon here. Next, I hope she's ready. I, oh, she's fluffing the hair out. So that, oh yeah, she's getting ready. Y'all know what it is. Say hello to Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I timed that. It was like I yeah. timed that. No, I'm not oh, that talented. I'm I not miss talented. my locks. I miss my locks right now. <laughs> oh man. So for y'all who don't know me, I used to have locks and I swear my joints was beasting like down here. It was, it was, and it had a, it had its vibe of its own. It had a it vibe was, of its own. It was, it was a black L'Oreal moment and I used to could flip it and I can't, I can't do that anymore. Cause anyway, we're not going, we're not going to do that. You know this what? Not... We can see all of you and we love all of you. There so. we go. There we go. Mm -hmm. I'm all for it. I'm yeah. all for it. Um, so Miss Lauren, um, quite a journey we've had over the past couple of years. I'm glad that you're joining the platform once again. Um, even with all that's going on in the world around us, all that's going on in the world within us, um, you made a special announcement to the peoples this week, and I'd love for you to share it with us over here. Yeah, I would love to. So Nick and I go way back now, especially in the nonprofit sector. Um, I hope I'm not putting his words in his mouth when I say that we both love our community. We both take pride and joy in serving our community. And for the past decade, um, I was a founder and then executive director and then program manager of the Motherhood Collective, an organization that seeks to equip and empower women from preconception to postpartum. And um, about in 2017, 2018, I started to go through um, a complete um, deconstruction of my life. Um, my marriage as I knew it fell apart um, and the whole world around me began to crumble. Um, and as I put my life back together, as I my divorce was finalized, um, I started to go through a beautiful, healthy sexual li liberation. Um, and through that, I began to recall all of the times throughout my maternal health work where I had spoken with people who were not aware of their own capacity for joy and pleasure, were not aware of the anatomy, oh, what's mm -hmm. that feeling? the anatomy of their own bodies right. um, and the bodies that are so beautifully designed that should mm -hmm. bear no shame. Um, and so um, last year, I went back to school to become a holistic sex educator, to become a certified holistic sex educator. So many hundreds of hours of credentialing, so many hundreds of hours of lectures, so much writing. Um, and at the end of last year, I announced my departure from the Motherhood Collective and then kind of sat on my quiet little dream sat on it like a, like a hen on her nest. Um, and then as Nick said last week, I announced to the world that I've officially launched my sexuality education business called Sex Ed For You. It's really simple. That URL was available and I jumped. I pounced. Yeah. Um, so Sex Ed For You is now alive and well. I do private classes with individuals and couples. I do group classes. Um, I do group workshops, six week classes. Um, and I'm truly, I could cry. I'm, I'm having the time of my life. It's, it's, it's okay if you cry. I promise we'll hold you down. Um, I got to say that it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing to see uh, the work that's being done just across our community, you know, um, and in a time as this, such a time as this, you know, to be able to handle and go deeply into these conversations, you know, yeah. and I feel like that's pretty on theme for tonight. Uh, I don't want, everyone to put themselves out there, but how many of us as a young kid, as a teen, thought that like sex was the pinnacle of love? And right. after that, right. that's it. it like, mm -hmm. Mm. right. And you, right. you only know what you know, right? Right, well, and so many equate it with love, right? Yeah. Or yeah. like, 
well, I guess the person who I love the most, I will mm. give my sexual intimacy to. Mm. Which Let's then, how crushing it. is it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When that doesn't end up being the person you're with forever, or mm. and I'll share what I'm going to share later. But yeah, right, yeah. like that, that can become really intertwined and really hazardous to the human yeah. psyche, to our bodies, right? Um, anyone who's done any trauma work, right? We know how much <laughs> we hold in these bodies, um, and sexual intimacy um, is a big thing, and it can, in my in my biggest dream, I think that it is a form of activism to mm -hmm. say that I am going to live a pleasure filled existence, right, is to say no, no to all of you who try to put claims on my body, right? Mm -hmm. This is the type of pleasure that I am worthy of, that I'm deserving of. Me and my partner or partners are going to have untold pleasure and joy yeah. um, because we're deserving of you it. You deserve it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was going to say that, but yeah. Yeah. It's it's deserved. It's deserved as you know we inhabit these bodies. Um, I want to put you in a little bit of hot seat, so don't get mad at me too much. But nope. as we said, we are observing and celebrating uh, Black Legacy Month, Black Heritage Month, mm -hmm. and I know I'm aware of your work with Mother Collective. But in this new space, because um, for those who don't know, when it comes to the guerrilla warfare that is nonprofit work, Mother Collective got and gets busy. Um, to the point where they were able to introduce a lot of work for doulas, for mothers, for those who need care post, during, and no, pre, post, and I'm messing it up. Uh, pre, when, during, and post, right? That's pre, during, and post. Uh, yeah, pre, during, and post. And um, I'm curious how, how you see this work impacting communities that typically get ignored or co-opted for their bodies, i.e. the Black community, specifically Black women. You're going to put me on my soapbox. Nicholas. Let's go. Let's go. That's all we do. You know that. Box, bro. <laughs> you know that. So, so as Nick is referencing, one of the hardest things for me to leave with the Motherhood Collective was our collaboration with my incredible sister, Kenda, and Birth and Color RVA. So we brought Birth and Color to Lynchburg. We did a training of doulas in 2021, and then they just did another training, another cohort in 2022, and I was able to raise funding for that before I left. Um it is my passion mm -hmm. that women of color get the services um, that they deserve, right? This is this is just uh, most of the babies in this friggin' country were born to midwives of color, right? That this country would not even it was born on the backs of women of color. So mm -hmm. it's nice. <laughs> Putting me up the box here. I set you up, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, in the world of sexuality, though, it was crucially important to me that I find a program um, that had done the work of decolonization, that had done the word of, work of inclusivity, um, that identified right the land that we lived on and who who we were truly serving and in what way we were serving them. So. As I mentioned before a little bit, I truly believe um, that pleasure is a right and that pleasure is a form of activism. And mm. I'm kind of preaching to the choir, but Nick's wife, Brittany, is an incredible therapist and shares all of this. So if you don't follow me, go follow Brittany because she does a ton <laughs> of work on this. That rest and pleasure are truly some of our most radical forms of activism. Um, and so my hope, it's funny being over here in the for-profit sector now, but my hope is that through my for-profit work, I can then go into our communities that are incredibly underserved and provide pleasure-driven, consent-driven consent sex education Right. That empowers young people that mm -hmm. doesn't avoid and withhold sexually empowering information that leads to teen pregnancies mm -hmm. of young women of color. Mm -hmm. Right. That then leads them to not having access to the care that they want and need. Um, so in my mind, it's like I went like back a few steps in the developmental system to begin serving even earlier so that I can hopefully do my part. Um, but yeah, I also I also just wanted to share, and I told this, Nick this earlier, um, I would highly encourage anyone to look up Dr. June Dobbs Butts. Um, she was one of the leading sexuality researchers of our time. Um, I love this, uh, this quote. It says, June Dobbs Butts is a hidden figure of sex research, the way Katherine Johnson was of aeronautics. Um, and anyone watched, who watched that film remembers that, right, we had all of these strong 
amazing black women behind the scenes doing the research that made us able to like go to space. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, and so I would equate Dr. June Job Butts in this way. Um, I, there, the articles on her are fascinating in that I always like to say people have always been doing the work, right? Yeah, there, there's yeah. always someone doing the work before we get there. Um, I just hope to kind of like pick up the banner alongside my friends and continue on. Absolutely. Well, listen, I, uh, I'm glad to see what feels like a seamless transition. Um, I know it's not, but <laughs> I am excited for the work that's continuing in this version, in this iteration. Uh, I also appreciate, and I'm speaking for myself, I do not represent the entire Black delegation, but I appreciate um, using your capacity, using your vantage point, using your privilege in a way that shines a light on discrepancies, that shines a light on ways that many people don't have what other people may. You know, don't have the information that other people may. It's about time to start talking about our bodies like they're actually our bodies, yes. like we have agency over our bodies. Right. Um, regrettably, and I'm in my think, 30s. And to, think that that, to, to think that that could start so early, right, just yeah. gets me excited, right? Like that just makes my heart beat. Like it does. Right? It, it, the, it's exciting. It's definitely exciting. So if you could for me, drop a link to Dr. June that you mentioned. Uh, so that way people can, you know, read up on her, explore her, add somebody else to their list of Black people they know about outside of Malcolm and Martin. And hopefully, you know, we are doing some education and along with having fun with this open mic. I'm so excited. So before you go, I have to ask you the question. I forgot to ask Chloe. Dang it. Um, but I got to ask you the question. Uh, when you think about love, when you think about how you give love, how you receive love, mm -hmm. how deep, how deep does it go for you? How deep is your love? Can I read something that I wrote a little while ago? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was also trying to get a link at the same time. That's not possible. I'm going to put this in. I can't do two things at once. Not Take at all. Time. Not at all. So, you know, as I was, I was listening to the incredible piece from earlier by Miss Sandra, um, I was taken back to some of the really dark times of my story. And I like to be really transparent that I might smile a lot. Um, but I, I think I smile because I lost my mother um, in 2007. Um, and at the same time, um, married a human, um, a wonderful, sweet man um, that dealt with severe alcoholism and is now thankfully um, in remission for that. Um, but also is a person who is attracted to men um, and didn't know this about himself. Um, and so I'd like to read a piece. He recently came out and we are celebrating um, his coming out. But I would like to read a piece I wrote um, kind of in the in the midst of it, because when I think about love, Nick, this is this is what I think about. Um, you took my virginity and formed my sexuality. I rejoice for you now. I hate you then. Look what they made us, the irony. Stay away from men, they told us both, and let us write to each other. I forgive you, and yet you let them believe I was the evil one. I love you, and yet you did not defend me. You controlled and manipulated me to protect your reputation. You tried to suffocate my life so you could be safe. But now, and now, we will both shine. We will not hide. We will not hate. We will celebrate. We will be free and we will love. I forgive you. Wow. 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 Yeah. So when I think about, when I think about love, yeah, that's, that's what comes to mind. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. It, it gets thrown around a lot. Like we said before, it gets misunderstood and confused. Yes. It's, it's a heavy boat. Right. I, um, my hosting hat is on, but like I, I really hate rushing past pregnant moments like this because this is essentially what tonight is about. Yeah. 
Um, I'd love to invite also, I'm, I'm aware that we have, you know, a community in the comments and, you know, whether on Facebook or on YouTube, um, but I'd love to to open it up if everyone wants to share their own wild, insane, crazy, hectic, beautiful, nasty, disgusting journey mm -hmm. with love, Lauren. I mean, that, I know going through that shit was rough. It was, but that, I, I tell folks all the time, would I ever want to do it again? No, but would I ever change a bit? No. Yeah, I, yeah, and I can yeah, see yeah. Miss Sandra saying in the comments, right, that she relates. And I, 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 there were so many lines in her piece that connected to my soul because, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't trade that for the world. I wouldn't go back to the naivete. I wouldn't go back to the person who was not acquainted with this level of understanding because it would have it would take so many gorgeous souls for me. But yeah, yeah the deepest Man. darkest yuck. Salute, salute to you. Um, salute to you and your your previous partner, your present yes. partner, you know, everybody that's dancing this dance of love yeah. in our story, you know. Um, listen, Lauren, it has been delightful and lovely having you stop by our little stage here tonight. Um, I'm promising everybody to please connect with us when we are in person. Please, because I need I need one of these again. You know us. We love <laughs> yeah. our hugs. We yeah. love our hugs. Yeah, the hugs, man. That's a language all on its own. Um, yeah, thank you for joining us tonight. You take care of yourself. I'll put links in there. Yes, make sure you drop the yeah. links. Thank you. Whoo, guys. Yes, we're getting active with it. We're getting at can we do I dare? Yeah. I'm a I'm gonna do a little little music break because that's just the kind of guy that I am. All right. I hope you guys are okay with that. I'm gonna let's add this right here. And I'm gonna pick this guy. I don't I don't apologize. I don't apologize. I had to do it. Is there ever a wrong time for Prince? I say no. I say, why don't we play Prince more often? I got a couple nominations to replace the national anthem. I'm gonna tell you what. Anyway, that's a different open mic. We're not gonna do that tonight. <laughs> We're not gonna do that tonight. Listen, shout out to everybody that's performed on our mic so far. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. Allow me to Bring to the stage, that was my poet voice. Did y'all catch it? That's not, that's not even how I perform, for real, for real. Uh, y'all make some noise for our signature artist of the night. Clap, emoji, dance, meme, do what you gotta do for Mr. Levi, the poet. <laughs> my face is so close to the screen there. What's up, man? How's it going? going Thanks for having go. me. I am having a blast right now. Um, in addition to some of the beautiful souls that touched the mic already tonight, I've been a big fan of Levi the Poet for from way back. So I'm supposed to be a professional host and all of this right now, but the fanboy in me is like, gizzy, gizzy, gizzy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. I'm glad it worked out. I know we tried to do something in person in the fall, so hopefully yeah. that can still happen one of these days. I want one of those hugs. I yeah, see how let's you guys do it. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Yes, I'm with it. I'm with it. We got to make something happen. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. Yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico right now and Woo! hanging out. My, I got, I got, you know, super, actually, well, what I was going to say is super pro setup with my dog on the floor right next to me. But the last <laughs> tour that I just did, I brought the dog on the whole thing. And some nights he just jumped up on stage with me. So it's nice. about normal actually. Yeah. Right now. yeah. yeah that's what you love. That's what you yeah, love. It is what I love. That's amazing, so, man. I know that um, over here in Virginia, you know, we got our own thing going on, but we like to be aware that we are in a, a global community, a, a community yeah. bigger than our own. Uh, yeah. These past two years have been have been hard for a lot yeah. of people. Some feel it in different ways. Uh, uh, consider this like a little check-in. Like, how have you been doing these past couple? 
It's uh, it's been a lot, man. Co- uh, between uh, I well, let me let me say, I'm actually I'm doing pretty well right now, and I'm super grateful for it. But it's not been without its. Uh, I mean, the amount of resonance I had in the conversation that you <laughs> just had uh, regarding the things that you, uh, the the things that um you know, went away, you didn't expect them to, that maybe Mm -hmm. you wouldn't take back for what you learned from them, but uh, certainly didn't ever envision being a part of your life have all been very resonant things for me. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, my life has changed more in the last couple of years than it's, uh, than than I can, than I can adequately explain uh, in a couple of minutes on this conversation, but I'm grateful to be here. And it's not just platitudinous. Like I, I really am thankful to be able to be here. And uh, it's interesting, the amount of gratefulness on the other side of all of the deaths that we go through um, um, as well. And that's real, yeah. uh, surprisingly real. So I'm thankful for that. You know, I love that. The, su- the surprisingly real, like we, we, yeah. You kind of miss that sometimes. Yeah, well, I think I think I think dying teaches it to you. You know, suffering teach. Mm-hmm. I mean, we we heard that from Sandra in the very beginning. Like suffering is a is a refining fire. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah. and uh, and and I do think that um, the more you live, the more you know. And I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not uh, I'm I'm and I'm and I'm still a young man, but here we are, you know, I mean, some of what I've got to share tonight is born of it, um, as well as the, as well as the, the gratitude on the other side. So there is another side. That's good to know. That's good to learn. It's good to hear. Sometimes we need that reminder. We do need that reminder. Now for everybody that's watching that may not be aware of exactly how hard you go in the pain, (laughs) just, Uh and I'm, I'm saying this as a fan to kind of give them a heads up. Yeah. But how would you describe your work well i mean i went a lot harder i went a lot harder 10 years ago when i first started doing this thing (laughs) right i mean i i grew up in the hardcore scene in albuquerque new mexico and i'd go and scream all my poems at metal shows and stuff you know so i'm not gonna scream into the i'm not gonna scream into the camera right now like i'm (laughs) i've learned how to temper myself i'm chilling i'm sitting down in a room you know what i mean i mean beforehand it would have been like you know, yeah. pull a mic, let's grab your head and smash it into mine and yeah. do a bunch of really not COVID friendly things uh, I, in this pit right that. now, you know? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I, I mean, even the last time I came through Lynchburg, I was at a speaker tree, I think with, with, yes. the, with, the, with a heavy band, you know? And so, it's, yeah. I'm, yeah. So a lot of times, you know, if I'm doing a show, I have a couple of different sets. Sometimes it's just spoken word stuff like this. Sometimes it's got a big audio visual kind of mm-hmm. production accompaniment thing to it but um you know i i grew up loving heavy music and hip-hop and super contemplative narrative storytelling and mm-hmm. so i've tried to make that a part of the work that i've done over the years as well i love uh i love it when you can communicate things well in in narratives a lot more than bullet points and uh that's what i've tried to do with my writing and um and i've pretty much always written to perform so uh, I did just publish everything. Finally, I had like 10 years worth of stuff that I've been touring on. Uh, and then <laughs> middle of the pandemic, that was one thing that came out of it. I was like, well, I freaking well. do something right now. So yeah, I finally, yeah. finally put the 10 year kind of commemorative thing together. And that was nice. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, so uh, I'm excited uh, for you to share it with the people. Um, yeah. And Thanks for uh, having I would me. love to to chop with you a little more afterwards, but yeah. for now, let's not yeah. keep the people awaiting any <laughs> longer. Without any further ado, I pass it over to you. Thank you. This is a poem uh, called "It's All Worth Living For." Um, that ended up being the title of the book as well. I think I think it goes well, actually, not just with the theme of how deep is your love, but with some of the <laughs> subcategories in the conversations that we've been having tonight, like uh it is all worth living for no matter what all of it is and uh so thanks for letting me be a part of the night um please stay please stay i just had the most god awful cup of coffee that i have ever had in my life you've got to try it 
<laughs> I drank it at a local diner charging specialty prices. Like they didn't buy it from Costco three weeks ago in bulk, new, three pound sized Folgers tubs. Not cans, not cool, like hipster third wave coffee bags. Tubs. Like plastic versions of the ones that my great-grandfather used to spit in when I was a kid. Boasting mountain-grown quality since 1850. His half full of saliva and cancer. Whose threats amounted to little more than minced words when dementia beat his gums to the punch. Fuck. <laughs> Eventually... We are all going to have to leave, but slow down. Stay a while. Let's not force it. Gigi used to shuffle down the hallway through shag carpet that covered the house with tentacles or a 1,200-square-foot trampoline like Jesus, the only name that he never used in vain, gliding over storms to take his friend's hands, the old man would float around the corner and high-five the grandkids with a thin-lipped grin. Like, kid, you have absolutely no idea what life is. But I wanted to find out. We had to jump to reach his hand, and the smack of our skin sounded like a pop tab cracking into the morning Budweiser. He'd drink as religiously as you might sip a cup of coffee at 7 a.m. He's all beautiful and weathered and leather-skinned, like maybe gutting so much of that dip throughout the years finally began challenging just how much a body is able to tolerate before it starts to break down. I know you ask yourself that same question all of the time. Spit it out. You're still here. I'm still here. We're still here. And still might be as much of a miracle as here ever was in the first place. So let's not waste it. We are still here to make this memory today trying to cover up the taste with cinnamon and mocha powder, neither of which quite get the burn out. But we know how that goes. You got enough experience with people trying to tame solar flares on band-aids to know that sprinkling platitudes onto the scars on your arms will not be enough to convince anyone that life is beautiful. <laughs> It just won't, but maybe, maybe, maybe the wonder of another actual human being actually sitting here and subjecting himself to drink <laughs> this for the sake of being in your presence will. Anyway, I'll tell you all about it if you want me to, but this cup of coffee God, it is so bad. You've got to try it. I want to hear about your family. Tell me about your great-grandfather and how he got through the Great Depression. And tell me how you'll get through yours. This moment is a part of it. Breathe. I want to high five my son's son wearing whatever vintage is 65 years from now with beauty and pain and wonder and presence written into the fault lines all over my face like I have made my mistakes. And the earthquakes are real. They're real, but they shape you. And the ravines created are gorgeous places to let the sunlight cast its shadows through. We can hold one another's hands in the process. I will let you squeeze until my breaks if you must, but don't let go. 
Tell me about the love of your life and what color her eyes are. And whether their tint seems to change depending upon what she's wearing that day. My wife's my wife's fluctuated between special dark and milk chocolate. <laughs> so not at all. She is worth living for. Please stay. I know you need ears to hear this kind of thing. And I know that those kind of ears are miracles. I know that it's not as simple as simply being committed to either life or death. But while there is still breath in both of our lungs, then there is still time for me to say, please stay. Stay for the wedding. I swear to you, that first glimpse of her rounding the corner like a dream is enough to transform you into everything and nothing at the exact same time. Stay for the reception, for toasts from friends whose lives are better off with you, but willing to subject themselves to the small deaths that each of us experience when it comes time to forego our jealousy and let the lover in. Stay for the wedding night. All awkward and glorious and vulnerable and naked and unashamed and painful and empty and full and imperfect and absolutely perfect like the dichotomies that you are and always have been like two becoming something else. Stay for the fights. They're devastating and necessary. And if you are able to temper the moment, then I will be the lightning rod that you will need to strike over a cup of very bad, very overpriced coffee at 4 a.m. when the couch springs are stabbing you in the back. I won't say a word unless you want me to. Stay for forgiveness in the morning. After the sun has gone down on your anger or your sadness or your wanton abandon and mercy still finds his way to meet you when he peeks his head out over the mountains to the east. Stay for every memory that will resemble around the dinner table. Not quite the way that it happened, right? Like it's never quite the way that it happened. <laughs> but it's definitely not a lie, memorialized and floral, the way that fiction gets at truth like laughter when we tell one another the stories year after year and they grow. And at this point, we are all sure that yes, as a matter of fact, 100%, it did rain literal cats and dogs during our darkest nights. And we thought that God was gory, but it is all grace now and life is movement. And we are making and breaking and shaping and being made all of the time. This coffee tastes like the bad action movies that my dad used to love. And I imagine him, whose presence I feel every time DC introduces another Clark Kent, who will never quite be Christopher Reeves gulping that mud down and calling it something absurd, like delicious, had he accepted the invitation to stay. The way that I loved to help him light the pilot beneath the hot water heater in the house that we grew up in. Legend. He needs you. She needs you. They need you. We need you. I need you. Please stay. Find what you were made for. I just had the most god-awful cup of coffee in my life. You've got to try it. It is all worth living for. It tastes like a morning liturgy. And my great-grandfather's high fives don't forget that there are voices on the outside of your head, too. And they sound like futures. And carrying the love that you told me about through the front door of your first home together and hopes 
and hiking the Blue Trail through coastal towns in northern Italy and stopping for bread and wine that cost less than water along the way and and parking tickets, and love, and changing light bulbs in the bathroom, and love, and the promotion that you've been working toward, and love, and being let go, and love, and holding your friends close when they are breaking into pieces, and love, and your friends holding you close when you are breaking into pieces, and love, and everything that we have to tell one another about where we came from, and where we want to go, and love, and all of the help needed to get there, and love, and being loved, and love, and love and love, and love, and love, and love, and love. <laughs> I, I just had <laughs> the most disgusting cup of coffee that I have ever had in my life. You guys have got to try it with me. Thank you. My gosh. My gosh. <laughs> My gosh. I'm supposed to be really eloquent right now, but I can't say the words I want to because my five-year-old son is behind me. And he's <laughs> that I can't yeah. explain. You at got the your moment. sensor there, yeah. Well, I do. That's all yeah. good. Oh, but his tooth just fell out. Come here, buddy. Oh my gosh. Oh, hey, let's congratulations. Show let's show the button. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Awesome. Oh man. Awesome. That's awesome. so good. That's so good. Thank you. Um, wow. Tonight is extra cool. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Oh my god. Did he god. slam the door for it or did it just come out come you right know, out? I didn't hear a thing. Okay. All right. So, so I don't no know door what slam. happened. For that tooth to fall out, and I'm just gonna leave well enough alone. That's good. That's well good. Enough. But That's dude, good. so wow. Oh, thanks, wow. man. Thank you. Um, and I want to thank you for sharing that. I want to thank you for bringing the uh, awareness to how um, how that kind of love plays itself into our own self care. Um, mm -hmm. the community that like looks out and says, Hey, we actually want you to stick around. Like yeah. we need you to be a part of this. And I know that we all have our own journeys through that, that, that Valley. Right. Um, yeah. I want to ask you how, how did you, how did you experience love during those moments? Like, how did you recognize it and identify it? Like, you know what? That's love. How did you identify mm -hmm. those? I felt held by the people around me. I felt like the, I feel like there's something extremely significant about the co-suffering of other people mm, mm. who, who, who say, you know, on the one hand, you're right. Like, and I've learned this <laughs> in new and uh, awe inspiring ways over the last couple of years to return to your original question. There is a degree to which each person's journey is deeply <laughs> their own lonely thing. The, but the, the, the thing is everybody's doing that. <laughs> and yeah. so we still get to be here. Like, I know, like, I, I don't, I, I know I'm here. Like you're doing the work and I'm so damn proud of you for doing the work. Yeah. And so to get to have people around me uh, in, in my own losses um, to get to be around other people in theirs, um, it's huge. It's a huge, beautiful thing to get to co-suffer and inspire other, uh, people out of it and, or, <laughs> or, or with them in it, however long that lasts, you know? Right. Right. Either holding them down or holding them up and Ooh, that's a bar. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wow, that's yeah, amazing. Lauren's on it. <laughs> yeah, was she writing it down? Yeah, All right. yeah. Well, I just we've got the. <laughs> I, I recognize the language. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot. There's a lot you said, Lauren. That's like, yeah, right. 
I know. Yeah, there's there's a lot to be said though about just uh having a community, and a lot of us try to like hold that by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, listening to those like those voices, those lying voices. Um, mm -hmm. and I do appreciate you encouraging it. Like the the ones outside are real too. Yeah, the ones that are externally, those matter as well. Yeah, uh, so if you're well, listening, there's something to listen mm -hmm. to. And I and you know. And this piece, when I originally put it together, played a really specific role for um, like mental health awareness month. I was working with a uh, with with an organization um, called To Write Love on Her Arms that has done a lot of work in the mental health space and has been huge for me in my life. And um, and a lot of my work kind of airs toward that because of some of my own story, paternally and and personally. And so, um, yeah, man, I think. It's, it's, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to remember that the voices outside of your head are not yeah. lying to you when they tell you that you're, you're valuable and that you're loved, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's a, uh, it's definitely a, a big, uh, it's a big part of the love conversation that I think is too often ignored. And um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of walking away with a lot tonight. I know I'm like the guy and the whole host or whatever, but I love how we've touched on all these different topics from, from our own sexual health to our own mental health, to our own self-love and mm -hmm. all of that. Um, I'm, it's been an honor to host you and have you here tonight. Uh, before you take mine. Off, Thank you. Before you take off, cause this is not going to be the last time we've got, I don't know how, but we've got to do actually when I get my notepad ready, cause I don't have it with me right now. Yeah. When I get my written together, we're going to do this again. All right. That sounds good. <laughs> I'm down to do that. I want to get, I want to genuinely get out there and do a proper full show. I think that'd be really fun to do. I, I, you know, as long as we can get back in, in person, let's do it this year. That'd be phenomenal. Actual. That'd be, that'd be beautiful. Uh, before you take off though, um, I got to ask you, um, now this poem went a lot of places with that love conversation, but let's mm -hmm. open it up. You know, let's mm -hmm. talk fraternal love. Let's talk familial love. Um, mm -hmm. All the different ways that love takes shape. How deep mm -hmm. does that love go for you? How deep is your love when you feel it or when you, when you give it? Hmm. I'm kind of on this metaphysical tip lately where I'm like, love is the ground of being because <laughs> I've experienced a lot of, um, uh, I think that there's a lot of love. There's a lot of waking up that happens through suffering and through great love and great suffering. And I've experienced a lot of it in life. Um, in both in both places but i think like i tend to I, i've tended to put a lot of emphasis on the difficult bits and have uh, and have have really through the last the last i couple of years especially um i don't know i feels like wake waking up to the reality that like i can be me and i can be seen for who i am and loved that way and do yeah. that for others you know i think i think um in my world um whether through my own experience or 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 in the work that i've done with a lot of the people that i've i've you know are kind of in my orbit um i think and just in general let's not like you said you opened it up so i think um i think it's often hard for people when they have realized i can't be both seen and loved at the same time and it's like yes you can you i see you you can see me we can love well in that way and my family's been a huge part of that um i've experienced all kinds of uh <laughs> relational collapses um that have have that, that in the moment i thought oh wow the, the love is going away and it's never ever 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 been true like it's just a lie <laughs> that sense of separation is just a lie and um i love being able to to live into uh, the sort of like love that never, the love that, in, <laughs> the love that endures all things. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, there's going to be space for that too. Um, man, I don't want this to stop. Uh, I really appreciate you, man. I really do. Not just for your art. Um, I know as creatives, it kind of tends to be a, what can you produce for me kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And on behalf of the listening, we, we see you, we celebrate you, we appreciate you for uh, joining us on this platform. Uh, consider this an RSVP. We definitely won't do this again. Hey, 
I'm 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 all game. Thank you, and thanks to every whoever's watching for letting me participate in such a rad thing. It means a lot, genuinely. Absolutely. I love what you're doing. Like I've really enjoyed tuning into this whole thing. It's been it's been really nice. So thanks to everybody else who shared as well. It, it was wonderful to watch you and and hear what you had to say. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. But all right. Oh man. Uh Yo, you guys are feeling my heart tonight, man. Y'all are feeling my heart. I really, I, by no means am I saying this like shoot down anything we've done in person, um, but it's really beautiful that the community uh, of the listening and that, you know, the listening is comprised of is still showing up and holding space for each other, um, given this topic. Um, you know, it's funny, in the planning for this, um, I was fully aware that it was taking place during Black History Month. And the rebel in me was like, no, we need to go extra black. Um, but then I also thought, you know, I'm free enough in my blackness to talk about other things. Uh, so there's that like double consciousness that gets talked about. Um, I am curious though, can you love someone without loving their culture? That's something that I've been thinking about and it's come my way a lot. Can you love someone without loving their culture? Now, that's not exclusive to the Black experience, but we're going to talk about it since it's that month, and I'm here. <laughs> um, can, can can you do that? Is that a thing? Can you say, oh, well, they're just a person that I don't see culture. Like, can you do that? I ask that because a lot of what our country says and does in terms of how it engages people from different backgrounds and nationalities, that, oh, we, we want you, we all love you, it's all love, just come to these shores, and then the reality of brown skin and black skin people on this country doesn't really feel like love does it i i could be wrong i'm just one guy um but if we're going to talk about how deep love is let's talk about actually showing and proving you know do we um do we need another holiday or do we need legislative change if we're going to be for real if we're going to talk about all these things that matter like do we do we need the the, the platitudes to uh quote the good brother Levi, or do we want something real? Anyway, that's just me talking because I'm on the mic. I apologize. No, I don't. But on to the next person on the mic. I see Miss Malia has joined us. I hope she's ready. And if she isn't, too bad. <laughs> hey, everyone. <laughs> What's going on, kid? Um, Nothing, nothing. I actually have been taking a break today. I just woke up right before this, so I am fully rejuvenated actually wow. but happy black history month happy black history month to you shorty yes. oh my gosh how you doing hey one time for the black women real quick yeah shout out to Please black ladies to black. everywhere all the black women across the globe we see we see y'all we love y'all even though we screw it up most of the time shout out to black africa man anyway sorry uh, how you doing tonight? <laughs> um, I'm good. I'm actually planning on talking about Black men tonight. I'm actually going to switch it up. So I just think as far as how deep my love runs right now, I just think we have to remember that we have the capacity to be anything that we want to be. And we always have. Like, and I've just been really into the fact that we've been doctors and educators long before slavery. Like we've already had what we've needed to be great for so long, but not everyone realizes it. So it's just like a matter of having each other's back. So shout out back to black men. Aww. So yeah, black women have you, but yeah. Appreciate the so, love. <laughs> this is a piece that I wrote. I'm going to do two. One of them's really old, but I don't think I've performed either of these before. Um, this one is called Ode to a Dark Man's Humanity. A dark man enters the world with his fate already decided for him, which is the case for everyone who believes in fate. But for a dark man, destiny is a curse. A dark man's destiny is a dark man's worst fear because that means coming into the world at the bottom as a stair stepped on with the dirty shoes for the privilege of progress coming into the world at the bottom is to be the book under the shelf to keep it from wobbling the book nobody bothered to read and it's so scratched up now it might not even say the same thing that it used to but it might 
because one person's oppressed, stereotyped, gunned down trash is actually our treasure. In Dark Men, I see so much more for you. So don't lower your head to the streets that don't love you. And don't get lost in them trying to prove yourselves because a dollar is the same shape as a casket and the highest bidder doesn't have your best interest at heart. So Dark Men, keep your head up. Yes, you have a lot to lose, but you don't look like a lot to lose to way too many people like, how many years in prison exactly is your black body worth? Because it's worth infinity to me and I'd hold all the pain of a dark man if it guaranteed not his survival, but his life. But as for now, it doesn't. The burden of having love in a dark man is really a blessing and the circles might be bullet shaped, but I'll stand in the middle of it long enough for these dark men to know that I love them back. Oh. I, I, I know that you're a writer and I know that you're a poet, but I can't hit, help feel like a, a, a proud uncle every time you step to it. Um, golly, I appreciate you, kid. You said you, have, you, said you had another one? Yeah, I'll do too. Um, I like this one just because I wrote this in right on the cusp of 2019, which was right when I joined the listening. And I never read this because I still had stage fright. But I'm just yeah. now realizing that I've gotten to my two years in with the listening within this past two weeks. So <laughs> I'll share it. But I wrote this one and I don't even remember writing it. It's um, a sentimental autopsy. That's like a mode of poetry or whatever. But this one is called Skin. With skin as dark as wet cocoa powder, smooth to my touch as it glides across my hand effortlessly. Skin that becomes refuge as I retreat to it in the midst of day-to-day -day pains. A complexion with no simplicity, melanin-born troublesome since the second that the sun kissed it. A complexion with the gold tint that reflects across your forehead when you sweat. You wear the coat of motherland knowing the issues that come with it, but you wear it proudly like I wish I knew how. It shines bright in the light unapologetically as the skin deep concept reaches your bones. Skin filled with scars of your own stories, every blemish with a memory. I aspire to learn these scars like a map. Memorize every mark, every crevice, the veins that pop out of your wrist like they have done no wrong to me. Hands of the strongest grips of to mine, the grips that remind me to remain myself, the print on those honest, vulnerable hands make my soul vibrate for more. Thank you. Oh, man. No, 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 no. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you for showing up and showing out. For those of y'all who don't know, um, like we mentioned before, our Freedom School program has been in Lynchburg since 2019. And Miss Malia over here was one of our servant leader interns this past summer. And rumor has it we're gearing up for another summer, gang, gang. Gang, gang. <laughs> we out here. And um, I'm excited to get back to it. Um, there's a lot more developments to come. But, um, you know, for this to be a way you celebrate your two-year anniversary with the squad, I appreciate yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Much love to you guys. Thank you. No problem. Take care of yourself. You too. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, we do have another person who hasn't performed. He showed up previously, but he hasn't really performed quite yet. So before Mr. Avery steps to the mic, I have a question for the audience. I wish I could see y'all, man. I really do. Um, but I see y'all in the comments section. Miss Janice, how you doing, ma'am? I see Miss Carol Bonds. I'd love to meet you in person. I love it. I love the enthusiasm and the energy. Jerry, I see you, boy. All right. Who else we got in the comments? We had a few people showing love all throughout the night. I love the consistency. I love the enthusiasm from everybody. Um, I got a question for y'all. It's come up a few times, the uh, idea or the question of how we love ourselves, how we take care of ourselves. And if you're anything like me, your own journey with self-love has been um, trifling. Let's call it Let's call it that, trifling, how we see ourselves, how we look at ourselves. My question to you is, would you marry yourself? Would you marry yourself? Now, you know all your trash habits, how much you do or don't clean yourself. <laughs> you know your filth. But you also know the things about you that you think are quality, that are worthwhile, right? 
at least by now, hopefully. You've been rocking in the same body. You've been seeing yourself in the mirror. You know your attitude and how you really feel about American Idol again for another season. You're aware of all these things. Would you marry yourself? A little something to chew on. I thought about this while watching Seinfeld the other night because Jerry uh, ended up dating a girl. And he's like, she's the best. She's amazing. She's so wonderful. And George is like, she's kind of you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> she's kind of you would you marry yourself would you would you fall in love with yourself would you be able to commit to you are you able to commit to you and not just the fancy nice parts but you know the icky stuff the smelly stuff uh the stuff that doesn't make it to social media just a question Jerry, Jerry said we'd work out more. <laughs> Got somebody to spot you on the bench press. <laughs> I mean, if you got your ace with you, do your thing. <laughs> uh, listen, we, uh, we're going to bring Mr. Avery up to the mic, and I am excited about this one for show, sure, representing for the RC. How you doing, brother? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Uh, I, 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 really hate that i have to follow up all of these amazing talented people i i'm a i write poetry i'm very much not a like spoken word person but i will i will give it my best um i've been writing for 10 years now um but you know i'm very i'm i'm just blessed to be able to uh, be here and share some of my work absolutely absolutely without that being said the stage and the mic and the screen is yours. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, everybody, um, Avery Payne, um, coordinator for the Office of Diversity, Identity, Culture and Inclusion at Randolph. Um, very thankful to be here. Um, so uh, this poem is um, from um, a, a section, of, a collection of my poetry called uh, My Black Rage. Um, I wrote, th these poems are a culmination of um, things written back from back when I was in high school, middle school, um, as well as um, recently um, from 2020 and on. Um, this poem that I'm going to share with you now, it's called Truth of America, um, and America is spelled with KKK. <laughs> Those sworn to protect this state whose injustice has become too great. It can lead me away from my fate, but love has taken over the hate. So I use peace within my debate for a change will never be too late. Racial violence is America's game. I understand that we're not all the same, but who else is it that we have to blame? Turning a loving wife into a, into a dame, another black body brutally slain, killing a family who once had a name. As I sit in my room watching this clip, of equal men whose mouths better not slip. I see the blood of my people slowly drip, trigger happy 12, just letting them rip. I was raised to know, don't give cops no lip, sounds of sirens and all my friends dip. I wish I could give a happy ending, but the, the peace for our people is still pending. There's no melting pot or even a blending. Prayers to our God I'm forever sending. See, I knew you had. I knew you had some work with you. I knew you had some, some bars with you, cause you y'all play it low. Y'all like cats like Avery play it low key. Like, like you just like just ah, you know, I'm just doing my thing, going to my office and whatnot. Nah, I see you. I see you. <laughs> and, I see you. And if I if I could, I, I'll share with just one more. If that's all right with you. If you can do it quickly, cause my Chrome laptop is telling me that it's about to die. All right, I'll do this one real quick, real quick. Um, this poem is called um, Black Owned. This is another part of my uh, Black Age collection. There's an understanding uh, that Black people must know. In a fight against capitalism, the Black dollar needs to grow. In the current American society, everything is run by dollars and cents. Stop relying on them to lift us up. The Black economy must be immense. The average American dollar stays in the com Black community for six hours, not months or years, into the system that we're trying to fix. Use the talents that we've given, 
to take away the root of their wealth, to reconnect our own communities, taking our dollar to fortify our health. I'm not trying, I'm, I'm, I try not to say this ignorantly as if uh, this would be something of ease. It will, it will also be another slow fight, but in the end, we will have the keys. Begin by trying your absolute best to put your money into everything black owned. Clothing, groceries, nonprofits, and banks, the time for change has already been loaned. Thank you. Amen and Ashe. Circulate that dollar, y'all. Definitely. Man, I appreciate you, sir. I want to hear more, but this is not, <laughs> not the place to put you under the gun like that. And I, I don't want to, I don't want to set you up. Thank you for sliding through tonight, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So, folks, it pains me to say that we are near the end, but what better way to end our night than with the one that kicked us off in the first place? I heard through the grapevine that Miss Sandra had one more that she wanted to drop off with us. Miss Sandra, you ready to rock? Yes, I am. Awesome, awesome, yes, awesome. Yes, I am. I'm ready, and I want to end with uh, that other poem that I began with was so uh, hard. I want to end with a soft love poem because this whole program was about how deep is your love. So this poem is about a deep love. It's entitled Kissed Back to the Beginning. They kissed so well, so deep, so long that they felt too well to be once more the longing instilled in the initial measurable moment when she and he first molded lips over lips. They kissed so well, so deep, so long that their beginning became their now. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! Don't do it to me, Miss Sandra. Now I'm. That's the listen, way you ended. <laughs> no, listen, come on now. This is your love, your beginning, because yes. you're now. Yes. You know how you are when you first fall in love. When mm. your beginning becomes your now, that's some deep love. Mm, talk that talk. Oh Lord, <laughs> and it's a Friday. Hey, hey, let's get the bottle ready. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, I appreciate you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you for coming back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, party people, it is that time. I, I honor and appreciate and love each and every one of you for sliding through. Shout out. Shout out. What? Shout out again to Randolph College and the office. Uh, oh, I'm about to F it up. I'm about to mess it up. Ooh, Miss Keisha, she's going to beat me up when she see me. Office for Diversity, Inclusion, Culture, and Equity? Identity. Diversity, Identity, Culture, and Inclusion. Thank you, Avery. <laughs> <laughs> now, shout out to Randolph uh, once again for supporting the listening, um, not just in our programming that we do during the summer, but also here tonight um and also shout out to all the other poets uh lauren with sex ed for you um there her link is definitely in the comments that we dropped up earlier so make sure you check out her website and also our signature artist for tonight mr levi the poet all the way from albuquerque we 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 in, not international we what is it called when you're all around the country intercountrial it, it's one one of those <laughs> but uh continental yeah I think it's intercontinental. I'm, I'm, I'm washed. I'm washed. Listen, it's been a blast. I, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. For any more information about the listening and the work that we do throughout the community, definitely check out our website. It's at welcometothelistening.org. Also, tonight's open mic, as you know, was free, but running the listening is not. And we love all the support that we've gotten over the years, and we would love to invite you to be part of our community of donors. There are many ways that you can give. You can check it out at the website as well. Welcome to the listening.org. On the behalf of the board, volunteers, and staff, I thank you guys. And once again, thank you for listening. Have a beautiful, beautiful night. Deuces. <laughs>